हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक टू आवर चैनल के एस एस गुरुकुल टूडे वी डिस्कस द चैप्टर ऑफ क्लास इलेवन बायोलॉजी बायोलॉजिकल क्लासिफिकेशन इट्स द इंट्रोडक्शन पार्ट बिफोर दैट इफ यू हैव नॉट येट सब्सक्राइब टू आवर चैनल प्लीज सब्सक्राइब आवर चैनल एंड प्रेस द बेल आइकन टू गेट न्यू वीडियो अपडेट्स as we have already learned in chapter 1 that the attempt to classify organisms is not a new idea but it has already been started since the beginning of civilization first come to classification by aristotle aristotle was the first to classify the entire living organisms on a more scientific basis he classified the plants into trees serves and herbs based on simple morphological features likewise he also classified animals into two groups that is animals with red blood and animals without red blood now classification by carlos linnaeus later on carlos linnaeus developed the two kingdom classification system known as binomial nomenclature in which all the living organisms are grouped under two kingdoms first kingdom animalia second kingdom planta the basis for this classification was gross morphological features next what are the limitations of binomial nomenclature so binomial nomenclature is a simple system of classification where classification is eg it had many limitations it failed to distinguish between the eukaryotes and prokaryotes unicellular and multicellular organisms and between non photosynthetic organisms like fungi and photosynthetic organisms like green algae also large varieties of organism do not come under these two kingdoms by time more bases for classification were included apart from the gross morphology like the cell structure nature of world mode of nutrition habitat methods of reproduction evolutionary relationships etc the system of classification was undergone several changes by the passing of time however the two kingdoms that are the kingdom animalia and kingdom planta remain constant in every new classification system only the additions of new kingdoms were made however the criteria for their inclusion changed from the previous one now let's discuss a new system of classification evolved by r h whitaker in 1969 that is five kingdom classification here the five kingdoms are kingdom monera kingdom protista kingdom fungi kingdom planta and kingdom animalia The basis of classification in five kingdom classification are cell structure, body organization, mode of nutrition, reproduction, and phylogenetic relationships. Next, the point of discussion is six kingdom classification. Carl Urs proposed the six kingdom classification. according to it the whole organism were grouped into three domains that is archaea bacteria and eukarya the prokaryotic kingdom monera came under the first two domains that is archaea and bacteria we may say kingdom monera was divided into these two domains archaea and bacteria are both domains as well as kingdoms the remaining four kingdoms namely protista planta 
fungi and animalia we are included under the third domain that is eukarya. Thus it resulted in a six kingdom classification system in which the six kingdoms are Archaea, Bacteria, Protista, Planta, Fungi and Animalia. Now we will study the characteristics of the five kingdoms that is of kingdom Monera, kingdom Protista, kingdom Fungi, kingdom Planta and kingdom Animalia. First the cell structure or cell type. Only the kingdom Monera among all the five is prokaryotic and the others are eukaryotic. Second the cell wall. Only in kingdom Animalia the cell wall is absent. Other four kingdoms possesses cell wall. Cell wall of kingdom Monera is non-cellulogic and is made up of polysaccharide and amino acid. In kingdom Protista, cell wall is present but only in some of them. Cell wall in kingdom Fungi is made up of chitin, a polysaccharide. Cell wall in kingdom Planta is made up of cellulose. Third, the nuclear membrane. Nuclear membrane is absent in kingdom Monera and present in other four kingdoms. Next, the body organization. The kingdom Monera and Protista have cellular level of organization. Kingdom Fungi has multicellular and loose tissue organization. Kingdom Planta has tissue or organ level organization. And the kingdom Animalia has tissue or organ or organ system level organization. Now let's simplify these terms. Cellular level of organization means the cells are loosely aggregated without forming tissue. Individual cells work independently. Tissue level of organization means instead of individual cells, group of cells work in a coordinated way to perform a specific function. Organ level organization means multiple tissues form an organ which is an identifiable structure of the body and perform specific functions. Organ system level organization means group of organs work together in a coordinated manner to perform a specific function. Last characteristic is the mode of nutrition. Mode of nutrition in kingdom Monera is autotrophic that is chemosynthetic and photosynthetic and heterotrophic that is saprophytic and parasitic. Mode of nutrition in kingdom Protista is autotrophic that is photosynthetic and heterotrophic. Mode of nutrition in kingdom fungi is heterotrophic that is saprophytic and parasitic. And that of kingdom planta is autotrophic that is photosynthetic. In kingdom animalia mode of nutrition is heterotrophic that is holozoic or saprophytic etc. This was all about the characteristic features of five kingdoms. Now let's discuss what were the drawbacks of classification systems earlier to five kingdom classification system. Before the five kingdom classification system was started, the bacteria, blue-green algae, fungi, mosses, ferns, gymnosperms and the angiosperms were included under one kingdom, that is kingdom planta. The common characteristic between them or the basis for inclusion of them under this kingdom was the presence of cell wall. But in many other characteristics they widely differ. On this basis that is based on the presence of cell wall the prokaryotic bacteria, blue green algae that is cyanobacteria and some other eukaryotic organisms came under one kingdom. 
also under those classification systems the unicellular and multicellular organisms we are included under one group for example chlamydomonas that is unicellular and spirogyra that is multicellular came under algae no differentiation was made between heterotrophic fungi and the autotrophic green plants though they have differences in their mode of nutrition as well as composition of cell walls earlier chlamydomonas and chlorella were included under algae that is plant kingdom and the paramecium and amoeba under animal kingdom but five kingdom classification brought them all together under kingdom protista as the criteria for classification was changed in five kingdom classification many organisms belonging to different kingdoms in earlier classification now grouped under one kingdom come to the conclusion of this topic lastly the classification system is ever changing it will continue to be changing as long as we enrich our knowledge in understanding the characteristics and evolutionary relationships of organisms establishment of a new classification system has already been attempted which will include a new criteria to classify that is phylogenetic or on evolutionary relationships apart from the other criteria like morphological physiological and reproductive similarities this was all about this topic feel free to subscribe like share and comment your valuable views thank you for watching